A ceremony that honors those who lost their lives during the Gwangju uprising takes place at the site of the government crackdown. Jung Yi Hang recalls the day when he was caught up in the fight between protesters and the South Korean military. I remember I was on my way to work on May 18, 1980, when soldiers were parachuted into the city. They started chasing me. The May 18 Memorial Foundation says at least 154 people were killed when soldiers retook the city from demonstrators who opposed South Korea's military dictatorship. Dozens more went missing, and around 4,000 civilians were injured during the fighting that ended nine days later. At the time, Seoul labeled the uprising as pro-communist. That is one reason why some foreign powers, like the United States, did not condemn the crackdown. That is according to George Katsia Fikas, author of Asia's Unknown Uprisings. They were very much worried that democracy in Korea in South Korea would mean a regime hostile to the United States. Katsia Fikas adds that without the Gwangju uprising, South Korea would not be a democracy today. But he and other observers say they are worried about the country's current handling of protests. In April, South Korean riot police forcibly put down a demonstration led by the families of those who died on the Sewol ferry. Amnesty International condemned the government's action and raised concerns over freedom of speech here. Some participants of the Gwangju uprising, like Na Il-sung, say this and other recent incidents make their sacrifice seem in vain. It has been 35 years since our protest and we have made progress. South Korea is a democracy. But I feel some of this progress is now rolling back and it worries me as a survivor. Na adds that democracy in South Korea is still something that needs to be fought for. Jason Struther for VOA News, Gwangju.